high time for another math, easy solution to discuss further into integrals and volumes, but now look at volumes by cylindrical shells. I'll go over introduction, so but first the background to it. Some volume problems are very difficult to handle with the methods in my earlier videos. For example, consider obtaining the volume of the shape formed by rotating this region here below uh, about the y axis. So rotating this region about it. So this function right here is y equals 2x squared minus x cubed. So if we were to take a, let's say, uh, a region like this, a section like this, and rotate this about it, uh, and we, if we were to look at it through using it in terms of y, so that's dy, we would need to know this side right here, xr. So we need to write that as xr. We don't know what that is. Yeah, this is if we were to do a horizontal section like this, and we would need to know what xl is, because we have to write it in terms of y. And this is going to be hard when we have a function like this. So dealing with this kind of function, it, it's just going to be more complicated because you have to solve this cubic function in terms of, uh, well, x in terms of y. So you got to flip this around. So that makes it just a bit harder. Yeah, but luckily, uh, when we were dealing with uh, with shapes like this, we could actually use the method of cylindrical shells. So in this case, instead of using horizontal section, we could use a, a vertical cross section, etc. And I'll go over this. So if we were to do that and rotate it, we would get basically a cylindrical shell like this. It would look something like that. Yeah, so it would look something like this if we were rotating a vertical section across. And so it looks l like this where we'll have, yeah, we'll have uh, three radiuses. We'll have this R inner one, we'll call this as R1. And now the outer one all the way across, that's going to be R2. Now we also have one, if we go to the center of it right here, we'll call this R, uh, and this is just the average uh, distance there. And then we also have the, the thickness which is delta r. Yeah, now the height of this is just h, so that's just this height here. And now the volume of this shell is going to be, well, volume is equal to the, the total volume using the outer shell minus the inner, uh, inner volume using the inner radius. So volume 2 minus volume 1. Yeah, and now the volume of the outer shell is just going to be, well, the area of the outer shell which is going to be the pi its areas of a circle is pi r squared so pi this is going to be our outer squared that's the area we all have to multiply it by height that's the uh, outer volume now we subtract by the inner one which is pi r squared but now this is r r1 or the inner and again it's times by h so that's all h there so if we rearrange this out, take the like terms out, so we have to take the pi out. So now we're going to have r2 squared minus r1 squared and times by h. And now uh, we can notice that this is just a subtraction of squares, so we could factor uh, this out or expand it. So we'll have this written as pi r, yeah, this is pi r2. This is just oh yeah, this is the outer radius plus the inner radius, and then times it by well, this is going to be outer radius minus the inner radius. So we're just factoring this out times by h, and as you can see, if you multiply this inside, you're going to get this above. So this one just breaks it down into these right there. And now what you could do further is just multiply the top and bottom by two. So two pi. And then R, I'll put the 2 right here. So we're not really changing this. Plus R1. I'll show you why I'm doing this. R2 minus R1H. So we have this. And as you can see, this part right here, this one right here is just, so I'll just make it a bit easier to see. This is just the average R. So we'll call this R average which equals to, well, the uh, add the two r's and subtract and divide by two, that's just an average. And that just equals to r, which is at the center point right here, the average uh, radius. Yeah, and now this part right here, the r squared 
Yeah, let's write it better. R, oh no, the R2 minus R1. That is just R delta R above. That's just the difference between the R's. So when we plug these terms in, we get volume of the shell is equal to 2 pi times it by R times it by uh, delta, yeah, this is delta R. Yeah, actually, I'll put the H first and then delta R. So there is our volume right there. And it's uh, easy to, to memorize because, well, we know that the, this part right here, you know, the 2 pi r equals the circumference of the circle. That's just, yeah, it's the pi, yeah, pi times diameter or 2 times um, the radius times pi. It's just the circumference of the circle. And now the h is just height delta r equals thickness. Yeah, and an easy to easy way to remember is this volume is equal to just circumference times by height times by thickness. So we could always remember the easily the uh, cylindrical shell volume. Yeah. So now let's uh, consider the volume obtained by the solid. Uh, yeah, we have the volume of the solid obtained by rotating this region right here uh, below about the y-axis. So if you were to rotate this one about it, it would look something like, well, you'd, you're going to rotate it around, etc. And it will look something like this right here. So you got a, this weird shape like that. So now if we were to apply the cylindrical shells, so we would, let's say, we, so we have this section right here, we would draw a, a perpendicular section like this where the center line right here is the we'll call the, yeah we'll call this point right here xi it's a random spot then with a line above so that's the center line and right here is going to be xi and at this point is just going to be xi minus 1 so this one is just, a, just has a line above yeah and now we're going to rotate this about the y axis so it will look something like like this And we're gonna yeah, we're gonna get a cylindrical shell right here. Yeah, it's just a bit not this, this doesn't look that neat, but anyways, you get the idea. Just making a cylindrical shell around it. Now the area of the cylindrical shell that's just well we'll call this VI, and this equals two, just exactly like above, where we have a two pi r times h times delta r. So in this case right here, well, we know this is just delta x. So we have it as 2 pi r, and this case is going to be, well, this point right here, which is xi center line. So x xi center times it by height. So in this case, the height is just our f of xi center line right there. So that's going to be our f x i center line times it by now the thickness delta x yes yeah, so that that is just our circumference times it by our height times it by our thickness right there yeah so now if we expand this uh, the cylindrical shell but now to include even more of these across the whole shape so it looks something like this right here now we would draw this across and it would look something like like that, I'll just draw it in a 3D fashion, and and you basically get the idea. So this one's going to be drawn across like that too. Yeah, and when you keep drawing these cylindrical shells, it looks something like this, kind of like a wedding cake like that. And and then the volume of this shape, well, it's going to be in general, it's going to be V is going to be roughly equal to now the summation of all of these shells. So from i equals 1 up to n of this just vi right there. And this obviously just equals 2 i equals 1 of n of the uh, cylindrical shell equation 2 pi. Now it's times it by xi this and then times it by v. I mean, I mean uh, f of xi center there times it by delta x. And now, yeah, and now, like always, when we have this uh, summation, as we go to infinity, we get closer and closer to the right answer. 
Yeah, right here, thus the volume now is just equal to, or yeah, it, it seems to be going to be equal to now the limit as n goes to infinity. So you have infinite amount of these shells of, yeah, of this uh, volume, x, no, i equals 1 up to n. Yeah, and I'll just put now the volume of the cylindrical shell, 2 pi x i center line, f of x i center line times it by delta x and now so this is getting closer and closer to the answer as you go to infinity and now when we know with our integrals yeah from the definition of integral this can be just written as from zero from a to b because that's where we're summing it up from so from this point to this point and this is equals to 2 pi x f of x dx so we just write this summation as this so that is our volume yeah, now this volume, uh, yeah, it seems reasonable, but a formal proof of this will be shown in a later video once I cover the concept of integration by parts. Yeah, but this, as I explained above, is more than reasonable that the volume, the, the exact volume is using this integral and the uh, cylindrical shells. Yeah, now the best way to remember using the cylindrical shells formula, this one right here, is is to flatten a shell as shown below. I'll show it right now. Basically, so you have this integral where there again this is two pi x is the circumference. There's the height f of x and our thickness d of x. So if you have a function like that, and again rotating about the y axis, so we'll have a shell like this. It will be it will look something like that. I'll just fix this up. And it goes something like like that. And again, that's through it. And there's it down there. So it looks something like this. And if we were to flatten it and cut it off, we'll have a shape like this. I'll just keep writing it here. So we'll we'll have a shape like that, where there's the thickness dx or delta x. So this would be um, this is yeah delta x or dx whichever one you want to look at let's put this in, in a circle like that so it doesn't mean we're dividing but so anyways and then the, this this uh, length right here is the circumference which is 2 pi x and now the height is just our f of x and that's a good way of seeing it like this so it's just a basic volume shape a rectangular prism like that yeah, and now uh, this this whole concept will be very useful when we dis when we find vo when we find volumes of solids formed by rotating about lines that aren't the y-axis but some other random uh, lines. So, anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully, you learned from this introduction to cylindrical shells. And like always, you could download these exact notes in the link below. And uh, thanks for watching. And stay tuned for another math easy solution.